All right, moving right along now, we're going to talk about the toolbar inside Photoshop and the various options that go with it a little bit more in depth. Now, with the toolbar, it's probably going to be the one of the most visited panel. In fact, I have no doubt it's going to be the most visited panel in your Photoshop workflow because this is where you access everything. Even the tools that correspond to other panels are going to be located in the toolbar. So you're going to have to select them in here. Now, with regard to the, to the toolbar itself, you can, as I mentioned in the last lesson, you can grab it and drag it outside the workflow or outside the application frame. And you can certainly click on the very top here and turn it into a double column toolbar if, that's, uh, if you like working that way. You certainly have that option. And I just want to kind of go down the list here and just kind of go through each of the various tools that we have. But I want to point out a couple of characteristics at, about the toolbar as a whole. Notice every tool as you hover over it. Highlights a tool, of course. Now, notice every tool has this little tiny... In fact, let me just kind of jump right in here and zoom. It's got a little tiny black dot or a black uh, triangle at the corner there. What that indicates is that there are more tools located within this tool. So by simply clicking a tool and holding, it will plop out a menu that will show you the various tools located in there. This is basically their tool groups. So you just don't have the tool that you see in the toolbar. You've got various tools that are in addition to that. So just by clicking and holding, you can access various other tools like that. Now this top tool is, of course, the move tool. So by selecting that, you can grab an object in your document and move it around. The second item is your selection tools, which gives you very definite uh, defined selections like rectangular shapes, elliptical or rounded shapes, single rows, um, vertical and horizontal. And you have your drawing selection tools, which is your lasso tool, which if you take it, allows you to just draw very loose selections. You've got magic wand and quick selection tools, which so it makes selections based on a range of tolerances. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but just to show you an idea, take that magic wand tool. If the circle is all black and I click right in there, because it's all one unified color, it's going to select the entire shape. If it were made up of a number of different colors, then it would have selected that based on a range and not gotten the entire thing. And you have your crop tool for cropping images, slicing for web graphics and such like that. Eyedropper tool allows you to sample colors and you can plot down counts and rulers and everything like that. The healing tools allow you to do a lot of really quick retouching. You've got spot healing, healing brush, patch tool, and the red eye tool, of course. Red eye is a common problem in a lot of digital photos. We'll get into these uh, healing tools a little bit later in the course, but that is where they are located. Various brush tools. The clone tool, which allows you to sample one area of an image and repaint it on another area of your image. History brush, eraser tools, gradient tools, very, very common tool used inside Photoshop. And notice when I'm selecting each one of these tools is what's happening up here. All the various options that you have for your individual tools are all in this options bar right here. So every time you select a different tool, a new set of options appears. Now, a lot of the options are very common and, and amongst all the other tools. So you'll see that you can access brushes, sizes, and things like that. But they're all going to have very specific functions for each tool as well. And moving on down the list here, we've got our dodge and burn tools for uh, adjusting photogra or photographs. rather. Blur, sharpen, smudge tools. The pen tool is a very good for, uh, tool for generating selections. Of course, the text tool, and you've got various text tools. Your standard horizontal type tool, vertical type, and horizontal and vertical mask tools. Path selection tools, you have vector shapes as well. You can actually generate vector-based shapes. And we'll get into these a little bit later, but these are just various shapes you can create. And we have our 3D manipulation tools. Again, these are only available in Photoshop CS4 extended. So if you have that version, you will be able to access these tools as well. You've got the hand tool and, and zoom tools for navigating around your document, zooming in and out, various things like that. And at the very bottom of the toolbar here, you have, let's just kind of zoom in here and we'll talk about that. You have your foreground and background color swatches. These are going to be used a lot. These are the current colors that are going to be used by a number of filters, your paintbrushes and things like that. You can access changing those colors just by clicking right on it. So let me zoom back out here. Notice when I clicked on it, it opened up the color picker, which allows me to change and modify my colors. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So if we're going to background colors, this tiny little icon right here is actually the default setting. So if I go in here and I've got a color set to that, if I want to return to my default black and white, you can simply click right on that icon and it will go back there. And you can flip around or bring 
or basically switch your foreground and background colors just by clicking this little bent arrow here, and that just flops them around like that. And the very last icon at the bottom of the toolbar is your quick mask mode, and that's a selection tool, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth in the selections lessons a little bit later in this course. So as I mentioned, we've got our various tools, we've got our options that appear up in our toolbar that we can modify it and change the various aspects of these tools to make them do what we need them to do. And just remember that those tools, all the ones that have these little tiny icons here, have a number of tools that you can access within them. Just like that. So another, one last thing I want to talk about when it comes to toolbars and option bars is something new to CS4. At the very top here we've got our application bar. And this is a way of accessing a number of features that you're probably going to find you're, you're going to need to get to when you're working inside Photoshop. Here we have a quick access to the bridge. You can uh, access your various guides and grids to show them, show rulers, various things like that. Here's your percentages for your zoom. So if you're not using the zoom tool, you can actually input a percentage and it will display your document accordingly. Got the, you can quickly access the hand tools and it's the same hand tool in the toolbar down here. Just a quick way of getting it there. Now here's a new feature that I didn't show in the last lesson, but I just wanted to touch on it here. It's the canvas rotation tool. And if you're an artist, or perhaps you're working on a Cintiq or some kind of display where it, you, not easy, it's not really easy to turn the whole device, and you don't necessarily want to rotate your document, you can rotate the canvas. Now what I mean by rotating the document is by just completely taking it and redrawing the pixels by rotating, rotating it 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise or such. With the canvas rotation tool, you're simply taking it and re Re, basically repositioning it as if you were setting a piece of paper on a table and you slightly turned it at an angle so you could write or draw at a certain angle or something like that. Same principle here. So notice when I, let's, let's, let's actually let's go back in here and reset the view. So just to give you an idea, if I take the rectangular selection tool and just draw a box, so notice it keeps it a square, it's got up and down, left to right lines. If we take that canvas rotation and give us a slight turn, that is going to know that. So I'm still drawing a rectangular selection. It looks angled because we've turned our canvas. So it's not redrawing the pixels or rotating your artwork. It's simply rotating your view of the artwork. And you can always go back into that feature and just click Reset View, and it brings you back to your original setting. The last couple things, you've got tiling settings, which means if you've got num multiple files open, you can go in here and just quickly select this, and let's go ahead and do this one right here. We'll do a three up. And what it will do is display all my open images in three columns like this. So if you've got three or more images open, and you want to get a quick look at them, maybe even compare side to side on a particular image, this is where you would access that to bring them up. So you maybe you want to do a two by, and you want to compare the two images next to each other. That's how you would do that. And you can always go back to your single frame view. Last item is your screen mode. And this determines if you want to do a quick uh, display so right now we're in standard screen mode, which is what we're looking at now. If you go to full screen mode with menu bars, it will basically fill your entire monitor with your Photoshop interface. And notice the background here is completely filled with the default gray color. If you remember in the preferences, you can change that. But it's also left the toolbar and all the panels visible. That last item, full screen mode, basically will Render your screen black, only showing your image that you're working on inside your Photoshop interface. It'll hide all the panels and do all that stuff too. Now another way of doing this or toggling through screen mode is simply pressing the letter F on your keyboard. So I'm going to press that again and it will bring me back to my standard mode. So, quick and easy way of getting to your tools, getting to the options, moving around your document. Now speaking of moving around your document, what I want to do in the next lesson is talk about just that, getting around, how you can move around, drag and drop between documents, moving around your various panels and do open documents so you get a little bit more easier thing, easier workflow there.